Alrighty, on this episode of Bouts Talk and Bouts, excited to be having an individual back on the show. It's been a little bit, and we got a big fight coming up at Bellator 284. It transpires August the 12th, and we have a flyweight bout. Two ranked contenders here, Justine Kish and Deanna Bennett, running it back there, and happy to be welcoming Deanna back onto the show, as I was just saying from the top there. How's your day going so far there, Deanna? Uh, my day's... Pretty, pretty good. Nothing to complain about. Got practice in this morning. Nice little run. Went to the Rocky Steps because one in Philly. Why not? And uh, yeah, now I'm talking to you. So great day. <laughs> yeah, and I'm kind of wondering whereabouts you're training at nowadays. Like you mentioned Philly there. It seems like Daniel Gracie team is where you're getting in your work predominantly. Is that kind of like the main space you're working at nowadays? Yeah, so I was cross-training here for my last fight camp, um, for my fight in February, and then after that fight, I had some things happen, and so I picked up out of Jersey, moved to Philly, and so now I'm a permanent member of the team here, and I absolutely, I love it. It's it's such a great environment, it's such a great team, coaches, teammates, everything, and it's like, I couldn't ask for better training. Yeah, and it seems like a good like pocket of time right now for people preparing for fights. Like it seems like Miles Lee is someone you're working with a fair bit there, and just you know getting ready for a CFFC title bid. So I would think that would lend itself to, I mean, good quality work had in general. But like when people have like you know the specific you know goals lined up and everything like that, I would think that benefits what you're doing a lot too. Absolutely. Um, you know, we're we're all hard workers on the team. You mentioned Miles; he's fighting this this Friday for the title. Um, my friend's watching his daughter, and so I was like, so we are watching his daughter because she's the cutest thing in the freaking world, and she's always at the gym. And, no, he's having him going for for that. And, you know, we have – I have a teammate next week fighting for, for PFL, just a short-notice fight, and then I'm the week after, and then the week after that there's some fights, and the week after that there's some fights. And so having, having so many people in the room – that have things booked and and are pushing themselves it it adds to the excitement of the fight camp you know it adds the excitement of the fight itself to have you know everybody you know working as hard as we can uh, so that we can continue winning and I like I said I I absolutely love it yeah it comes across and everything like that it seems like a good supportive kind of team and all but just in the relation of this particular fight here it seemed like even you know 10 weeks ago you were kind of like eyeballing a potential fight with Kana Watanabe who's number two in the division right now like when did this particular fight kind of get on your radar initially oh man you know I I definitely wanted that Kana fight I wanted somebody with a number ranked above me and uh, unfortunately, I, none of them would take it. <laughs> so I, I was kind of backed into a corner. Like, have, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I'm, you know, I can, I can try and sugarcoat this, but you know what? What's the point? Um, I, I'm not happy that I have to fight Justine Kish again. I do not want to fight like. If I had to pick anyone to fight, she would not be the person because I, I'm very, I showed in in February, she was my very last fight, I showed how I beat her <laughs> and it was pretty one-sided, you know, it wasn't like, oh, it could have gone either way, no, it couldn't have gone either way, like I, I very <laughs> handedly beat her and so to have to fight her a second time in a row, like, I, I'm not happy about it and I have been training extra hard with that chip on my shoulder and they they basically said you know it's Justine or it's no one because we don't have anyone else for you to fight and if you want to fight like this is the one and so I'm like all right well I want to get in that cage and I want to do what I can to get to a title I don't want to sit on the shelf and just wait for months and months and months like I was ready to fight months ago so I mean I guess this is what we're doing and that was what was offered and that's that's who I'm going to be against in the cage on on August 12th. Yeah, it's very interesting. I was even initially kind of caught off guard. I mean, it was an interesting fight the first time, but not necessarily one, like you said, that was like super oriented to like, oh, razor thin. Like it seemed like pretty clear where it was going. But I mean, you mentioned this being like an immediate turnaround for you and just, you know, Kish had the 
victory there over former champion Alima Lay McFarlane. Like, do you think that maybe this rematch could provide that opportunity for like a higher ranked opponent next time out, even just with, you know, Kish beating the former champion in the interim there? Like, do you think this rematch also almost has more benefits in a rankings kind of context this time out? Are you kind of looking at it like that or maybe not so much i mean you're talking about the chip on the shoulder but is there maybe a silver lining there <laughs> i i wish honestly i i'm gonna go out there and i'm i'm gonna beat her again and i'm gonna make it an even more clear victory than the first one was you know i'm not i'm not coming to play around this time like i i joke around tombstone is like my favorite movie of all time and oh, yeah. so you know play for blood like that that's just my game and that's that's what i'm coming for like i'm coming to make a statement with this fight to show why i should be fighting people at the top of the division and I, i'm looking for the top of the division and you know you mentioned her getting that fight against Alima. when my last fight ended at the post fight interview and in interviews i did afterwards i called out Alima. I, I wanted that fight. That's the fight that I wanted. And when it came around that she was fighting in Hawaii, that's what I asked for. And, and my managers were pushing for that. But because there's certain sway, Alima got to choose who she wanted to fight. And she picked who she thought was a for sure win, which was not me. She picked the girl that I beat instead of fighting who she should have fought. She should have fought me on that Hawaii card. But she didn't want to risk losing, even though she did. And look what happened. And not not trying to, like, shit talk or anything. That's that's not my style. I'm just stating facts here. You know, she, she chose what she thought was the easier route. And it didn't work out for her. And so, absolutely, I should have the higher fight. Like, do I think she's going to take the fight? Absolutely not. She had a chance already. And she already said no before she lost to the girl that I beat. So she's definitely not taking it again. But... Whatever it's going to take for me to get to the top of that division, that that's what I'm going for, you know? I'm I'm here. I want that belt. I have, like, my bucket list in fighting. You know, people have their bucket list for life. I have my bucket list for fighting. And at the top of that is winning that belt. And so I'm whoever they put in front of me, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go for it. <laughs> yeah, it seems like the division's in a curious place where you could really – you know, capitalize in that regard, just with like a lot of the top kind of contenders coming off losses and everything like that. Like, I mean, Juliana Velasquez, Denise Keelholz, Alima Lay, as we just mentioned there, like, what are your thoughts on just the general like top part of the division right now, just with the context that I'm kind of giving in that regard? Like, is it sort of a curious time to be a flyweight contender right now in Bellator? Absolutely. It, it's kind of a, it's, I feel like the top spots are kind of up for grabs right now because you have the people that are at the top of the division. They've already fought for the title or they're coming off of a loss, um, different situations there. And so, you know, I feel like I go out there, this will be, you know, win this fight, um, three wins in a row. It would be four in Bellator if I didn't tear my hamstring in that very first fight with Liz Carmouch. And cause I was, on route to winning before I got injured, before my hamstring just kind of popped off. And so, you know, given if she's still the title holder, you know, I feel like I've proved myself and I, I want that rematch. That's that's the fight that I want. And, you know, I heard the rumor that she's rematching Velasquez for, for the title. And so, you know, in an ideal world, Liz wins a second time. And coming off this win, then I get my opportunity because everyone else ranked above me has either fought Liz and lost or, you know, fought for the title. So I feel like I feel like it's it's my opportunity to get there, especially if they won't fight me. So, <laughs> well, that maybe might work to have some benefit in your regard to potentially. I mean, like you're talking about this fight and as far as like you got a dominant victory the first time out and it's like, ah, oh, we're running it back again here but in a sense like very much could you know vault towards the top part of the division with a win here and like i don't know sometimes like fighters will talk about that dynamic where it's like they enter a fight where they'd like previously beaten someone and then maybe the you know mentality isn't quite the same like maybe the backdrop of like the division being the way that it is and maybe if you have a show up performance you get a title shot like does it subvert that idea of like you've already beaten this person and then maybe the mentality can kind of orient itself in a certain way like is that kind of the motivation in this one just kind of eyeballing the belt as opposed to the particular matchup as it were 
you know, I, I've had those thoughts, but I, I'm the kind of person, like, I never want to look past what's in front of me right now. Yeah. So anytime I have a fight, like, no matter what, it doesn't matter who it is, doesn't matter if I've already fought them before, you know, I... I don't want to just brush it off. And so I've been training like I honestly, like she didn't beat me the first time, like training like maybe it was a close fight, training like I she's like the world beater and I'm the underdog that has to take her down. That That's the mentality that I come into every fight. And so, you know, obviously I have it in the back of my head, like, okay, well, this could set me up for, for the future, for the next one. But right now, my, my sole focus is what I'm going to do in that cage on on August 12th for, for Bellator, on Bellator 284. Like, what I'm going to do when I'm in South Dakota, that is my, my sole focus. And then after I get that win, then we're going to, uh, then we're going to, we're going to make some moves there and we're going to talk to some people, but it's, it's a weird mentality. Cause like you can't, I know I already, I have talked to people and they're like, Oh, you already beat her. Like, it's good. That's you're fine. Like, no worries. You already beat her once. And I'm like, no, 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 you take that route and something can happen. Like you never, you never like having to fight her a second time. I'm trading even harder than I did the first time because, you know, you can't you can't ever take it easy because you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, maybe the mindset becomes oriented to like, oh, I'll, I mean, not that you weren't thinking this the first time, but maybe like, oh, maybe the move is to finish it inside of the distance as opposed to the unanimous decision last time. Just in the context of like, it'd be good to just improve on the previous kind of victory as opposed to just resting on laurels. That seems like to be what you're saying. Exactly. Exactly. Like I wasn't able to get a finish before. Yeah, I won the fight. And so the next best thing that I can do is look for that finish and make it a rough night for her. Yeah, for sure. And focused on this fight, as you're talking about in the context of your own career progression, but just on the card, just there being another flyweight fight with you know Lima Lay McFarlane taking on Bruna Ellen is there I mean obviously focused on the competition at hand but is there any level of like following along with some of the other like localized bouts on the card that have relevance to your division like are you going to be sort of peeping that one in a particular regard or maybe not so much um, you know, anytime anybody from my division fights, you know, I like to tune in. I kind of like to see the the competition, and I like to see the people that are in the weight class. Like um, this past weekend, because I ranked currently number six since the last weekend or this past weekend, you had Vita Artiega, who was number five, fighting Vanessa Porto, number seven. So they're the the bread and the Deanna sandwich in the rankings. <laughs> kind of a weird way of putting it, but that's the way I think about it. And um, so I made sure to tune in, especially because, you know, I've, I've trained with Vita before, and even though she's in the my division and, um, you know, she's there in the rankings and there's always an opportunity to potential to fight, like, I, I think she's awesome. So I always follow you know, I want to see her and I want to see her succeed. And I'm super happy that she was able to win that fight. And like, she's probably the one that I would want to fight least in the division just because I like her. Like I would, if I had to, um, she's ranked above me. So if they offered her to me, of course I would say yes, but like, I would feel bad about it because I like her, <laughs> but, um, yeah, like I said, any, any time there's that, I, I definitely want to tune in and you know Alima being where she's she's number four in the division now. You know, she was the champ. She was ranked number one. Now she's four. I don't think she ever, unless, like, unless they absolutely forced her, I don't think she will ever fight me. And whatever. It is what it is. Like, she can fight her unranked opponent and get back on her winning ways, you know. I hope the best for her. I hope she does do that. And then if she does get back to the top of the division, maybe, maybe we will end up fighting. So we'll, we'll see. I'll, I'll definitely, I'll definitely be tuning in and I'll definitely watch that. Yeah, for sure. You strike me as someone who follows the division and you just articulating that really gives credence to that idea there. But one of your previous fights I wanted to touch on, cause I didn't get a chance to talk to you around that time there, just the Bellator 266 fight where you ended up getting the victory over Alejandra Lara and everything like that just the dedication leading into it just honoring your dad and 
everything like that. I thought that was really cool and it seemed like a very important cathartic moment for you. I just kind of wanted to, you know, get some insights on how you were feeling in that moment there because that seemed like a huge thing for you. So it's it's funny. Um, this morning, I was actually right after sparring. We got done, and I was sitting there, and I was talking to one of my teammates. Um, I was talking to Ian Austin. He fights for um, CFFC. We're sitting there talking, and actually that, that fight came up, and I was able to, to talk to him about how, you know, that's, that's – it was basically – like I'm from Fremont, California, just outside of San Jose – spent a lot of time in San Jose because that's where my dad was the cop and just how fighting in in that arena and fighting in front of a hometown crowd oh man like there was there was nothing that compared to that at all you know every fight I find I find special and I hold dear just an opportunity to be able to get into the cage but that one was such a unique experience for me you know I've been I'm a diehard Sharks fan I've been a Sharks fan as long as they've been a hockey team and so you know to be able to fight in the shark tank and I was telling them how they, when they picked me out of the locker room to go make my walk out to the cage I'm walking towards it and there's the shark head that the sharks skate through when <laughs> when they go onto the ice and so like and 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 just even that itself it's because me and my dad we're the ones that we would always go to the fights there and we would always go to the sharks games like so many things with him there and honestly i he was given the me the even though, you know, he's passed away and I, I know he was giving me the I told you so's because I went with him. One of the very first fights I ever saw live was uh, I can't remember which UFC was, but it was the Shogun Henderson, the first one. Oh, yeah. And yeah, it was the day after my birthday. I uh, he got me tickets for my birthday. So me and him went together to watch those fights in that arena and before I even started fighting, never had a fight yet. Like, I was training, but I hadn't fought yet. And he's like, oh, man, it would be so cool if you can fight in this arena one day. And, of course, just, like, fighting in general, I was like, yeah, sure. That's never going to happen. That's, like, big time. That's big time. And he's like, no, no, I know you're going to. I know you're going to. And, you know, stepping into that arena, we went and did the, the, the weigh-ins there. And like, I felt it, I felt him and I, I just had such a presence. Cause I'm like, I know he was there. I know he was doing that. I told you so. Cause he would rub it on my face as many times as he could. <laughs> Cause that's who he was. Cause basically he's basically me. I'm, I'm him. <laughs> we have the same personality. And so just goofy people. And so that's exactly what I would do too. And it, I can't even describe it, just being there. And, you know, after the fight, I was talking to one of my best friends from high school, um, lover to death, Michelle. I was talking to her, and I was so happy that her and her boyfriend came to watch my fight. And this this one of the, the cops that was working came up to me, and she's like, hey, I just wanted to say hi. You know, I worked with your dad. Like, he was a really great guy. I was so glad to be able to to know him and like I'm so happy for you and just like that right there just people that knew him and worked with him having having them there and having that support like I I it it felt like he was there you know because I always I, I carry his badge with me but like there's still that like you know I wish he was there like in spirit he's there but I really felt it on that fight like I I could feel it in the pit of my heart and I try to keep it together before the fight but afterwards you hear my post parent interview like I got a little choked up because I I could feel it like he was there and it was such an emotional fight and oh man I I, I could go on and on and on about that but I'll stop now <laughs> No, I love hearing that. That's so cool. I'm just, I guess the thought I had, like, have, have you gotten a chance to go to the arena after that fight to check out, like, any Sharks games or anything like that? Like, I would think that would be a very unique feeling, just, like, compounding just the sentiment around what seems to be, like, a very important venue. Like, have you gotten to check out, like, a Sharks game after that night or perhaps not so much? I haven't yet. Um, I, I have been meeting my cousins and everything still live there and I have friends that that live out there still in California and I've been meaning to go and visit them but just 
since September, you know, when I was sick in the hospital and then I had a fight in February and then moving to Philly, I just haven't had the opportunity to get out there. And so after this fight, um, obviously there's no shark skins right now or in <laughs> the off season, season yeah. ended. Um, I'm, I'm definitely, definitely going to make it to a sharks game out there this next year. I, I have to, and I, I honestly can't wait. Cause like, before the fight, it was my happy place. It's my favorite place on this planet, and you know, even more so now. And so, I, I definitely, even though they traded Brent Burns, and it hurts my heart, but still love the Sharks, and I will be a Sharks fan forever. So, <laughs> yeah, I've always known you to be a hockey fan, but we've also talked previously, and you seem to be a big music fan to like D'Antward and Iggy Pop we've talked about a couple times like is there anything you're jamming to right now like anything in the like current playlist as it were um my playlist is all over the place a new D'Antward song actually just came out and my teammates are being <laughs> tortured with it <laughs> um so that is always at the top of the playlist and then um big fan of Corpse well, not a lot of people like corpse, but I I sure do. Um, that's high on the playlist. Uh, um, I it's all over the place because it goes from again Deanford corpse. I'll go to some Young Gravy just because it's ridiculous and I love it. Um, heavy, heavy, heavy on the Teddy Swims right now. Oh man, like it's a little softer than I'm used to. <laughs> you can't go from Deion Spurred to Teddy Swims, but I freaking love him. He is my favorite. I have tickets to him in November. I went and saw him a few months ago, and so that's what I listen to, like jamming on the way to, to sparring, and everyone else is listening to their crazy stuff, and I'm listening to that, and man, I love that man. So that's that's also on the list, but all over the place. You know, little Alaska Thunderfuck, of course. Oh, yeah. Can't, can't ever, can't forget that one. Um, horrifying. All my new teammates with my music choice. They learned pretty quickly to not give me the ox. Like, <laughs> as a, I played it a couple times and my coach was like, what in the world is happening? And I was like, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. And Peaches. I was very sad. I was supposed to go see Peaches in concert not too long ago, but there was a, the Fury grappling matches were the same day, and so I went and saw my teammates on the, the Fury grappling matches instead. And uh, hopefully, actually, I think she's ha added some more. And so I think there's one in Vegas, like the week after my fight or a few days after my fight, that I might fly over to so I can see that. It's funny you mentioned Young Gravy there, though. He looks an astonishing amount like my younger brother. I always laugh whenever I see him pop up. Oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's crazy, but I love it. <laughs> Especially his the new song Betty because it samples the Rick Astley song "Never Gonna Give You Up," which is heavy, heavy, heavy on my playlist as well. So the fact that it has like the combination of there, I'm like, that's that's the one right there. <laughs> that's that's the one. <laughs> And I think probably the most part, or the most pressing question, rather, just as we're kind of getting closer to the tail end here, are you going to be rocking the Canadian tuxedo again for the weigh-ins, just because you did for the first Kish one there? You know, the, you can't really go wrong with the Canadian tuxedo. That was a that was a personal favorite. Like when I, I was shopping with my my old coach's wife, and I found that, and I was like, that's that's it. You have to go the Canadian tuxedo. Um, but I don't think I'm going to be rocking the same Canadian tuxedo, unfortunately. But I do, I think I, I do have what I have for this. I do have what I'm going to wear for this one. So it's a little different, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just have to see it weigh in. So. <laughs> yeah, still keeping it fun, I would think, and having a good time with it. I guess you got to keep it fresh every now and again, too, right? Always. Always. Because, you know, we'll change up. Well, we'll see what we got, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it's going to be fun to just, you know, see this fight and everything and just being so close to it, just like a bit over a couple weeks away from the whole thing. And just, yes, yeah, super stoked to peep that. But I do want to be mindful of your time, Deanna, as much as it's been fun having you back on the show. Like, is there anything you want to perhaps add as a parting thought as we're kind of wrapping up here, though? Um. Well, first off, thanks for talking to me. Always a pleasure. I do appreciate that. Um. And just... 
you know, things have been, it's, it's been a weird few months. Cause like I said, I, I picked up from, from Jersey, I moved to Philly and I, I seriously cannot, I cannot even begin to say how happy I am that I get to be part of this team here in Philly. You know, they, they're such a great team and like, they're finally, finally, finally getting the recognition that they deserve. Um, the, the Daniel Gracie Marquez MMA team, like the fact that they, they just accepted me with open arms. Like I didn't let them know how weird I was to begin with. So (laughs) that could be part of it. They're struggling to get it now, but (laughs) I was like, maybe if I just suppress the weird, they'll let me come here and train and then I'll, I'll, I'll sneak in the weird later. Um, but they they're so good. You know, if you watch the contender fights last night, Joe Pfeiffer, body bags, um, had that beautiful, beautiful check hook that he, he dropped that guy with and, and got the UFC contract. He's the only one that was signed to the UFC last night. And, you know, he absolutely deserves it. Every guy on that team is just so good. And they push you every day. Like that's, that's the reason that I, I started training there because I, I came a couple times, saw the level of training that they have, and I was like, I this is where I need to be. You know, this is the push. This is what's going to take to get to that Bellator title. And I every day I'm super grateful that that like I said that they accepted me and that I get to be part of it. And you know, I on this fight August twelfth. You know, I'm I'm going to show why. I am a part of the team and all the work that I've done to, to honor them too. You know, uh, they, they put their trust in me. They let me in and I'm going to do what I can to continue, uh, with what they're building there. Um, cause it's, it's definitely something special. It's absolutely something special. And so, you know, just thankful, like I said, for the coaches, Daniel Gracie, John Marquez, all of my teammates, um, you know, every day putting up with me and, and pushing me and you know obviously gotta thank you know sponsors uh rockwell watches um what else do I, fresh and lean sponsors thankfully because this whole move like i need them they're wonderful you need a meal prep company highly recommend them um but basically anyone that puts up with me i appreciate it because i am not the easiest of person to handle and i say a lot of weird and inappropriate things and so conversation can be hard sometimes so <laughs> anyone that deals with me in those aspects by all means and i can't wait for y'all to see my fight kit for this one um oh and fuel hunt i can't I can't forget them because basically they are the best rash guards, the best gear. If you're looking for anything like that, definitely, definitely hit them up. Um, I, it's what I wear every day. Like I wear one of their rash guards to train in every day and I love them. I can't speak highly enough about them as well. Um, but my fight kit is going to be fabulous. Um, yeah. So um, I'm just rambling now and I'm probably forgetting about a million people. But, yeah, that, that's where I'm at. And thank you again for talking to me and letting me ramble at you. <laughs> I think it just shows how thoughtful you are. You're just, like, rattling off all the different people in your life and whatnot that really contribute to this. And just, yeah, you know, it's fun getting to see the next chapter in the story there and just good to see you get in another fight in the calendar year. I was seeing you were getting a little stir-crazy there, maybe thinking of a, a career shift there. I think Glitter Destruction was the stage name you were going with, but glad we can get you back out in MMA. Uh, thankfully, I didn't have to make that that adjustment because <laughs> the people of Philly would have revolted. Um, they would have said, no, no, no. So <laughs> thankfully, I got the fight book, so no stripping in my future. If you do that for a living, by all means, props to you because I tried and I actually have a scar on my foot that proves that I will never be a pole dancer. So <laughs> this is this is a thing. So glitter destruction is, uh, yeah, she, she's out of the picture for the time being. And I'm pretty sure everyone is happy about that. <laughs> I think everyone's happy about just seeing that you got a, another fight here and I'm really looking forward to peeping that on August the 12th there and should be an interesting rematch with Justine Kish at Bellator 284 and just seeing how that informs the you know, flyweight hierarchy going forward. But yeah, just to reiterate, always fun getting to talk to you and great getting to have you on the show after a little while. And just, yeah, looking forward to checking out the fight and you have a good rest of your day, Deanna. 
Oh, thank you so much. You have a great rest of your day, too. <laughs> All right. On this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, excited to be talking to an individual set to compete at Bellator 284. This goes down on August the 12th, a flyweight bout and an intriguing rematch between Deanna Bennett and Justine Kish. And happy to be welcoming Justine onto the show. How's everything going with the training leading into this one, Justine? Oh man, training is amazing. Um, I'm very happy with the moves that uh, the moves that we made. Um, uh, just uh, every day, uh, goals being accomplished. So the training camp is going very well. I couldn't be happier with uh, with uh, what my coaches have put together, the game plan, um, the rematch. I asked for this rematch. Um, I wanted this rematch as soon as actually I I lost to her. Uh, whenever uh, the same day. Um, I went against uh, Deanna Bennett that same night. It never really got uh, going. I felt that the whole thing was a warm-up. And I was like, man, if we could just do a rematch right now, I, it would be a different story. But it wasn't right then and now, but it is now. So um, I got the rematch that I wanted um, because it, it's not the way to make it. Uh, whatever performance I put on that night, it, it um, the audience definitely deserved a lot better. And uh, I'm ready to put that on August 12th. It's kind of a curious thing you articulated on there. If you were almost saying like it felt like a warm up, like you didn't quite get out of the gate. Like, what do you, I guess, attribute to that? Was it the fact that it was like the promotional debut and kind of getting acclimated to all of that, or what would you, I guess, credit to that dynamic of it? Kind of feeling like you didn't quite get out of the gates, as it were. Yeah, out of out of out of the gate is exactly. It never really got going. It felt like a warm up, and yeah, I blame a little bit of you know. There's a lot of contributing factors to like why I couldn't really get going, and I believe it was because um, a little bit of ring loss, and I really didn't have a solid plan on how I was going to perform, how I was going to handle the new promotion, the new the new platform, the new audience. There's a lot of unknowns there, right? And now that I've got some momentum, I've got uh, two fights down, and I have uh, an idea of what the venue is like, what the promotion, what the audience, I can be more honed in i can be more focused i will be more honed in i will be more focused because i'm very familiar with the scene now so maybe it was a little too much for me i'm a very hyper person and you know i i, I absorb everything that 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 i see that i take in so maybe it was a little too much but um less surprises and more familiarity is when i really operate really well like i know i know what the pace is i know what the scene is going to be like and i can really stay laser focused on my goals and the job and that's to get in there and finish this fight. Yeah, well, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, you're with a, you know, your previous company for like half a decade there and everything like that. So a lot of new, you know, stimuli coming your way. But it seems like that, you know, second bout almost like you're kind of looking at it. It's like, okay, I need to almost put myself in this nucleus of a situation where I absolutely need to perform just in the sense of fighting a former champion in their, you know, home area and everything like that. Like how cathartic was it to get a victory of that kind of nature? Just all factors considered. I have to, it's so fun. I, Hawaii was just a magical fight week. Like, I mean, we do so much every single, like, I, I realize, like, now so much of why we do because i mean we we have all these competitions to experience you know, fight weeks like hawaii it was just incredible and then you know the, all of hawaii is very very powerful right just the land the people it's very tribal and very powerful so there's a lot of energy there um and even energy against me or with me but in a weird way i know it was, it was my opponent's grounds but i felt like energy was totally with me that whole entire fight week um my coaches had great connections out there and um i swear the people that were rooting for me i knew i could hear exactly who they were so i didn't have many fans <laughs> and it's totally fine i don't care if everyone's booing or if everyone's excited for me totally fine i want to put on a great show i'm a performer i'm an athlete um i, I like uh i like uh causing i like causing commotion right i love it i love putting on good shows and um i'm happy uh, when I do my best, and, you know, the outcomes, of course, we're all shooting for a win, right? But I want to put in a good fight, um, and I want to and I want to push myself. I want to um, I want to feel like, man, that, you know, I want to feel taxed. I want to feel certain things um, in, in each fight. Um, but that win was incredible, and off of that, you know, I don't, I'm not one to, like, dwell or celebrate too much because there's a bigger picture on the other side, right? The big picture is being an MMA world champion. And, 
that kicks me right back into gear. Okay, I got this win. That was amazing. I was incredible. Limo was a great competitor. Man, this finally puts me in a spot that I feel like I deserve to be with everything that with with everything that has happened. Like, okay, this I finally got into this um, into the rankings, right? And I, I'm now I get to face like I do better when my opponents are better. I do better. Um, meaning, like, if they're more skilled and a better fighter, then I'm, if they bring out the better in me. And I'm not sure. You know, I think I don't think I'm the only one that's like that. Um, so I do, uh, I do oh, want to face the best for that reason. So I'm not, I'm not, I don't have the attitude anymore. Like, oh, I'm gonna fight anyone, anywhere, anytime. I used to be like that, but it's changed for me and it's evolved to. You know what? If I'm gonna fight people, I'm gonna make sure it brings me up to the top. And if I lose, then you know I'm got to work my way back up. But I know I belong at the top. Um, and I am working every hard, every single day, asking so, the most ridiculous questions. I'm, not, I'm still asking questions like that a white belt would ask, right? But <laughs> I don't care. I'm not above it. Um, I want to understand everything and anything that's going on. Um, when I'm when I'm at my weakest, when I'm at my strongest, I am always a student. Um, I don't ever want to catch myself and go, oh, I already know everything. I feel like whenever we, there's a few things I have read that we tell ourselves, we know everything, that we got it, then you kind of shut off, um, like, uh, the learning aspect, um, and then you don't, and then you kind of stop learning, and I don't ever want to be in that state of mind, I don't want to be like, oh, I know everything, and then you kind of just stop, you know, stop your brain from, like, absorbing any more information, and I don't want to be like that, so always looking for, always looking to be a student, and to improve and I feel like this is the the the, the right uh, pathway to get to the top. And I found this amazing group of of coaches and people that are just supporting uh, uh, my efforts, my my tribulations, my my success, my uh, the the struggles. They're just supporting me every single way. And I'm, I'm excited to wake up and get going and set that goals. And uh, this is, and I know Deanna Ben is a gamer, and she did a great job controlling every round that last fight. So um, it's going to be a different story this next one, though. I know it will be. And that kind of segues into something I was curious about. Like, even though the outcome didn't necessarily go your way, like, were there certain big takeaways from that first fight that could lend itself to your methodology in this rematch? Like, obviously not giving away the game plan, but were there takeaways from that first fight that lend themselves to this next one? Being more prepared. There's so many takeaways of that fight. Deanna, she dominated every round. Like, I mean, I was, I, I, you know, my move, every move will have a purpose now. I didn't have, I didn't really know which direction I was going or what would happen in certain directions. And I do feel bad saying that at this level, but I do blame a little bit of, you know, competition you know, uh, had my, you know, uh, the hiatus from competing, right? So, um, but every step, every move that I have on this, and on the August 12th will have a purpose. And that's a huge difference in comparison because my attitude approached that fight and I did all my best training, but I wasn't really sure what was going to happen because I didn't have, my memory just wasn't, wasn't clicking, but things were clicking together and finally sticking together uh, to form a better plan. And I'll have I'll be more uh, more calculated for sure. And you were talking a bit ago too about just the aspirations for you know championships and stuff like that. It seems like the weight category is in kind of like a curious spot at this point, just with some of the bigger contenders kind of you know coming off losses like Juliana Velasquez, Denise Keelholtz, Ali Malay, like we were talking about there. Like, do you think this fight could almost like really put you in a spot where it's like you could either get a title shot off this win or maybe even like one win subsequent to that. Like, do you feel like you're in a very unique spot just with that? I'm letting the promotion handle that. I feel, I know I see the competition. I see Liz Kermish. I see Juliana. I see them. And I'm like, I, I see the fights. I'm like, I can do this. I can be in there with them. Um, I, I've got to, you know, put in the work and, you know, be smarter in there when I'm competing, but I'm gonna let the promotion handle that. If they feel like, hey, I'm a contender for the title shot, oops. if they feel like I'm a contender for the title shot, that's amazing. That means I earned it, and they feel like um, I, uh, I'm capable, then I'm gonna give them the best show ever. So I'm leaving that up to the promotion, but uh, heck, I see myself being, you know, uh, a title contender now for sure so uh but i there's this in this fight i do want to um i do want to uh 
I will say I would be more comfortable um, if I if I accomplish certain things in, on August twelfth, then I one hundred percent will have this confidence. Be like, man, I am a, I am I, I I'm champ I'm champion grade right now, right? If I if I can accomplish these certain maneuvers and these certain tasks that I'm working towards every day, then I'll then I'll know I'm I'm ready for I'm ready for the belt. So yeah, I mean that's cool. If if if, if, if 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 um, I'm in the radar for that, that's amazing. That that's 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 music to my ears, really. <laughs> Yeah, no, you're definitely well positioned, and this is a very intriguing fight in a number of ways, both with the action and the, you know, title hierarchy kind of dynamics too. But you've been really great with your time, Justine. It's been fun getting to talk to you a bit. But just kind of curious if maybe there's anything you might want to add as a parting thought as we're kind of wrapping up here, though. I, I'm, I'm excited to see the difference between. I'm not sure what's going to happen, but I'm going to go in there and put up a fight versus. Man, I know what. Uh, Every step that I'm going to do, I know how this is going to happen. So um, it'll be, I, I'm excited that, um, with this level of preparation. I'm excited to see how everything goes down because um, it feels dangerous right now. It feels dangerous. I got, it feels dangerous for, like, I, feel, I, got, no, it's, I don't feel the danger. I mean, like, I feel like I'm more dangerous now because um, the level of preparation that I'm at mentally and physically. Yeah, it's going to be awesome to check that out. And people can do so August the 12th, Bellator 284, Deanna Bennett and Justine Kish running it back. And, you know, awesome getting to have you on the show and giving some great insights, Justine. So thanks so much for that. Dylan, I appreciate that.